Oxalates are incredibly feared and misunderstood, causing people to avoid them, leading to more nutrient deficiencies. Oxalates are only a problem for people who suffer from a condition known as hyperoxaluria. Oxalates, the so-called bad guys of the health world, are blamed for everything from kidney stones to joint pain, and now people are ditching spinach, almonds, and even berries because of it. But what if I told you this fear is completely overblown and avoiding these antioxidant-rich foods could actually be hurting your health, especially your nerves? Today, we're busting myths and exposing the truth about oxalates and showing you why some of the foods you're avoiding might be exactly what your body needs. I'll show you how you can safely lower your oxalate content in any food. Get ready to rethink everything you've heard about oxalates. Hey Health Warrior, today's topic is very controversial. Oxalates are the buzzwords in the health circles that has everybody talking. They're fear, they're misunderstood, and they're driving people to avoid some of the most nutrient-packed, antioxidant-rich foods on the planet, essential for nerve health and vitality. You'll even hear many doctors and healthcare practitioners talking about the dangers of eating high oxalate foods but no one ever gives you the full story based on scientific evidence. So today, we're gonna to keep this extremely objective and look at the science behind oxalates and how they really affect your body. Are they truly dangerous or are the claims over-exaggerated? Let's find out. So what are oxalates anyway? Oxalates or oxalic acids are natural compounds found in many plant foods. They're produced by plants as a way to protect themselves from pests. Commonly, you'll find ox oxalates in foods like leafy greens, especially spinach, Swiss chard, and beet greens. You'll also find them in nuts and seeds, with the highest levels being found in almonds, cashews, and sesame seeds. You'll find them in vegetables and fruits like beets, sweet potatoes, rhubarb, okra, figs, blackberries, kiwi fruit, and star fruit. Legumes also contain them, especially soybeans and peanuts. And certain grains like buckwheat and quinoa contain high levels. But it's not just foods. You can also find oxalates in cacao and dark chocolate, black tea, and even turmeric. Now, if you've been a member of our Neuphoria tribe, you know in many of our videos, we'll tout the amazing benefits that many of these foods have on your nerves. So were we wrong? Well, let's find out. In our body, oxalates don't really serve any sort of purpose, and under the wrong conditions, they can actually be problematic. These compounds can bind to minerals in the body, such as magnesium, iron, and trace minerals, like zinc and copper, which can contribute to deficiencies. But the most alarming concern for many is when oxalates bind to calcium in the body to form calcium oxalate crystals resulting in kidney stones. Besides this, there's a certain situation when excess oxalates can lead to other health problems like elevated chronic pain and inflammation. They can also flare up conditions like fibromyalgia and vulvodynia or chronic vulvar pain. So should we stop eating foods high in oxalates despite their health benefits? Well, the answer is no. For 80 to 90% of the population, oxalates don't cause any problems because they're naturally flushed out of the body. There's only 10 to 20% of the population who are susceptible to oxalate buildup. This is a condition called secondary hyperoxaluria. So let's go over what makes some people more sensitive to oxalate accumulation than others. The first factor that can contribute to accumulated oxalates in your body is dehydration. When you don't drink enough water, your urine volume decreases, resulting in a larger concentration of oxalates in your urine. This can increase the risk of oxalate crystal formation, especially in kidneys, which can lead to kidney stones. On the other hand, when your body is properly hydrated, these oxalates become dilute and the body can flush them out easily, preventing kidney stones. The next factor is gastrointestinal disorders. Normally, oxalates are excreted in the stool, but if your gut lining is damaged, more oxalates may pass into the bloodstream, causing more buildup in the body. This can happen if you're having leaky gut syndrome, Crohn's disease, or IBS.
Now, hand in hand with poor gut health is gut dysbiosis. When you have an imbalance of gut bacteria, meaning you have more of the bad bacteria than the good bacteria, the oxalic acids can't be broken down and will build up in the body. So how do you know if you have gut dysbiosis? The most common symptoms are excessive gas production and bloating, especially after meals, diarrhea or constipation, food intolerance or food sensitivities, or skin problems like acne, eczema, and rashes. And even frequent UTIs or yeast infections in women can signal dysbiosis. Another contributing factor is low calcium intake. Calcium binds with oxalates in the gut to prevent their absorption in the bloodstream. The calcium-bound oxalate is then excreted through your stool. But if your calcium intake is low or you're deficient in calcium, which 50% or more of the adults are, then more oxalates in, enter the bloodstream where they travel to the kidneys and can accumulate, resulting in kidney stones. Did you know that vitamin B6 and magnesium deficiencies can also lead to higher oxalate levels because these nutrients are needed to break down oxalates? Other factors that result in oxalate buildup are liver or kidney disease and genetic disorders like primary hyper hyperoxaluria. This is a rare genetic disease where the liver produces too many oxalates because of certain enzyme deficiency, which leads to an excess of oxalates in the body. This condition only affects one out of one million people. Now, if you're unsure if oxalates may be a problem for you, there are a few medical tests which will determine if you have elevated oxalate levels. The most common test is a 24-hour urine oxalate test. This test measures the amount of oxalates excreted in the urine. This is the most direct method of assessing your oxalate levels in your body. Now, here's a couple of side notes regarding this testing method. Number one, before doing the urine test, you should avoid high oxalate foods for 48 hours. This will give you the most accurate baseline of how well you're excreting these compounds from your body. Otherwise, your test results will simply reflect the amount of oxalates you recently ate, which doesn't mean they're not getting broken down. Number two, stay well hydrated before doing this test. Dehydration can concentrate oxalates in your urine and potentially skew the results. So let's say you take this test and you fall into the oxalate sensitive group, meaning you're building up too many oxalates in the body and your body's not fleshing them out the way it normally should. Is this an indication that you should strictly avoid high oxalate foods regardless of their nutritional benefits? The answer is still a resounding no. There are a few simple ways to increase the breakdown of oxalates and prevent absorption into the body, even for sensitive people. So let's look at how you can do this. Number one, this is the cheapest and easiest method. Drink more water. It's really that simple. Water is your best ally to flush out oxalates and to reduce the risk of crystal formation in your kidneys. You should aim to drink at least two to three liters of filtered water daily. Always make sure it's filtered and not tap water. For more information on the best filtration methods, make sure you check out this video. All right, number two, increase your calcium intake. Combine high oxalate foods with calcium rich foods. For instance, you can combine almonds with yogurt or spinach with cheese. Calcium binds with oxalates in the digestive tract, which prevents oxalate absorption into the bloodstream and reduces the risk of forming kidney stones. All right, number three, cook high oxalate foods. Oxalates are primarily water soluble, making these uh, cooking methods ideal for removing the oxalates. Boiling high oxalate foods can remove up to 87% of oxalates depending on the cooking time. Be sure to discard the water after boiling. Now, steaming vegetables isn't quite as effective as removing the oxalates as boiling is, but it can still remove up to 50% of these molecules depending on the food. All right, number four, boil and soak nuts. Soaking nuts is a great idea because it will remove oxalates and also break down phytic acid, an anti-nutrient that interferes with nutrient absorption. But soaking will only remove up to 20% of the oxalates. However, combining boiling and soaking is the most effective way to remove oxalates from any type of nut.
For instance, almonds, which are the highest oxalate contained in nuts, should be soaked for 8 to 12 hours. Then after discard in the water, boil them for 10 to 15 minutes. After this, you'll want to dehydrate the nut to restore that crunch factor. Different types of nuts will require different soaking times. Now, you can just do a Google search to find out how long you should soak each nut specific nut. Using these two methods will reduce anti-nutrients like phytic acid and oxalates, especially for people who are more sensitive to oxalates, and it makes the nuts more digestible and nutritious. Number five, take more calcium. We know that 50% of the adult population is deficient in calcium, and this mineral is extremely important for nerve health. So add in a daily uh, calcium supplement along with drinking the required amount of water automatically prevents oxalate absorption. So there you have it, health warriors. The complete and accurate lowdown on oxalates. Oxalates might be misunderstood, but they're certainly not villains. Many of these high oxalate foods are true powerhouses packed with antioxidants, minerals, and nutrients our bodies crave, especially in today's world where so many of us face deficiencies. Rather than fearing these foods, we can learn to work with them by staying hydrated, balancing your diet with calcium, and using simple preparation techniques, you can enjoy all the benefits these nutrient-rich foods offer without worry. Remember, your body is designed to handle oxalates. It just needs the right tools to keep everything in balance. So let's embrace these health allies and make them part of our journey to wellness. To share more of this groundbreaking information with others, make sure you like and share this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to become part of our Neuphoria tribe. And before you go, hit that bell to stay up to date on more tips to fuel your health. I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. They can also exacerbate... <laughs> <laughs> exacerbate. <laughs> Say it three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> they can also exacerbate conditions... <laughs>